Nothing warms my heart more than watching fascists fight. And today, two of the most influential bigots in the country who both repopularized old tropes about LGBTQ plus people have turned on each other and they are now publicly spatting. But it gets even better because they're both also being dogpiled by the other's fans, which is only further fanning the flames between the two of them. Now, I'm talking about Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and stochastic terrorist Chaya Rychik of Libs of TikTok. And it all started when Rychik made this post about Florida, where she shared a news story about three undocumented immigrants that allegedly essayed a woman in a car and asserts that Florida, quote, apparently allows undocumented immigrants to obtain driver's licenses, which isn't true, by the way, hence why she was community noted. Now, Ron DeSantis seemingly took that as a slight against him, and he called her out for it on Twitter, writing, quote, Libs of TikTok got community noted for lying about Florida law, which not only prohibits undocumented immigrants from getting driver's licenses, but also prohibits recognition of licenses issued to undocumented immigrants from other states. Truth shouldn't be a casualty of attempts to generate clicks and engagement farm. So, I mean, he's basically calling her a liar and accusing her of grifting, and her family fans did not take kindly to that, which led to an all-out dogpile on DeSantis with them responding to his call out saying, WTF, who posted this? We know it's not DeSantis himself. Out of all the people to go at, why libs of TikTok? If she made a mistake, it will come out in the community note. It was clearly an honest mistake. There's no need for a personal attack. Chaya issued multiple statements clarifying her remarks. Ron, I've always supported you as governor, but you went overboard accusing libs of TikTok of engagement farming. People make mistakes. Have you ever made a mistake? Perhaps, perhaps like running against Trump? Got him. Yikes, this is a really bad look for you, Ron. Posts like these are examples of why he's not the GOP nominee, folks. I like his policies, but he doesn't get it. This is a private message to libs of TikTok, not a public battle. This feels personal against Chaya. You really don't want to get back in the good graces of MAGA, do you? You're already on thin ice with Republicans, Ronnie boy. Might not want to pick fights with people who are infinitely more popular than you. Now, there were a lot of other replies telling him to apologize, and some got pretty nasty nasty like these, where he was called a tiny D, and they even accused his wife of exaggerating her cancer. In fact, the dogpile was so overwhelming, as Ari Drennan explains, that DeSantis's press team is dutifully noting the flood of belligerent comments that follow an inaccurate libs of TikTok post, a trend that mainstream journalists and misinformation researchers have been reporting on for years now. And in his posts about Rychik, DeSantis's press secretary shared additional examples of from the harassment of people reaching out in earnest asking if it's true that undocumented immigrants can obtain driver's licenses in Florida and adds, this is something our comms team will be dealing with in perpetuity. It's another false narrative that will never go away, all for clicks, doubling down on the grifter accusation. Now, another defense of Rychik from her supporters is that she later clarified under her original post that Florida actually doesn't allow undocumented immigrants to obtain driver's licenses. And I think that she was probably finding that out in real time time, and she blamed the ones that were able to get licenses on a woke state attorney. The problem was she never deleted the original tweet, and the clarification was made more than an hour after the fact, and to make matters worse, the clarification only got a fraction of the views as her first tweet that went viral. And as a result, millions of people now think that DeSantis doesn't hate immigrants as much as he actually does in reality, which is why he was so pissed, because he doesn't want people to think that he's compassionate or would be kind to immigrants in any way, and now she put out that myth, and he's pissed. But Chaya responded directly to DeSantis, and it's clear that she was utterly gutted that her idol basically called her a liar and a grifter. But she defended herself and uh, has a perfectly reasonable excuse, in my opinion, that's very, very convincing. So her excuse is that she wasn't actually lying. She was being sarcastic. I'm not, I'm not joking about this. She writes... The last thing I ever thought I'd be doing on a Wednesday afternoon is defending myself against Ron DeSantis. I made a sarcastic comment. <laughs> this is so 
She's so unreal. I made a sarcastic comment about Florida apparently allowing undocumented immigrants to get driver's licenses because a woke state attorney literally told an undocumented immigrant to get a license. I clarified twice in the subsequent posts that Florida law doesn't allow undocumented immigrants to get licenses and demanded accountability from the state attorney who was trying to subvert Florida law. These corrections were made hours before DeSantis attacked me and hours before the community note was published. Now, the governor, who I've only ever congratulated for his wins and have never attacked, is publicly attacking me, calling me a liar and a grifter. Just wow. I, <laughs> she's, she's distraught, guys. Uh, I understand DeSantis wanting to correct the record, and this post could have been a correction, championing Florida's incredible record on undocumented immigration. Instead, it turned into a personal attack. For the record, I think DeSantis is a good governor, have publicly said this, and still stand by it this personal attack from him is disappointing so sad her feelings were hurt so she is trying to take the high road here and she's not mad she's just disappointed cope and seethe chaya cope and seethe now in response to that unnecessarily long post she ended up getting a taste of her own medicine because ron DeSantis's supporters decided to dogpile on her this is all too funny. So they responded saying, just delete the false post. I just made a sarcastic comment. No, you didn't. You lied. You got called out. Now you are playing the victim. Textbook MAGA. You aren't some hero. You are a social media influencer who does this for money. True. Chaya, you made a false accusation against someone on your own side. He offered you a place to live when you were doxxed, and you used false allegations to defame his governance. A simple apology would have sufficed. Just delete the post. You made a false accusation, and whether you intended to or not, it is seen as clickbait. We appreciate your work, but humble yourself and delete the post. You weren't being sarcastic, and you aren't the victim here, Chaya. I respect so much of what you do, but just own this and move on. How can it be a personal attack when you're not a personal account? And somebody also shared this comic of her shoveling shit, which is humorous. Now, what you saw was just a small taste of the backlash that she received, but both camps are still pissed because Raichik's fans are mad that DeSantis never acknowledged her clarification, and DeSantis's fans are mad that she left the original tweet up. So suffice to say, this bridge is burned. And this is significant because Raichik's viral posts about groomers in the LGBTQ plus community that are teachers is what inspired Florida's Don't Say Gay law. But on the subject of Don't Say Gay, there was another L this week for these two fascists, because as the AP reports, the law has been completely defanged as part of a settlement reached between the state and those affected by it. They report, quote, the main thing the settlement does is clarify a law that was purposefully vague so it could be used as a weapon to discriminate, said Joe Saunders, senior political director at Equality Florida and a former state lawmaker. A key point of clarity is how the law applies to classroom instruction, as opposed to mere discussion or mention of a topic anywhere on school grounds. He listed some things that will change now. Books featuring LGBTQ plus characters were removed from school libraries in one county. Those books must now be returned. But depending on the content of the book, a teacher might not be able to say, read it aloud in class. Anti-bullying programs that had been ditched because they addressed anti-LGBTQ plus bullying can resume. Teachers in a county that once allowed them to designate their classrooms as LGBTQ plus safe spaces with a sticker on the door were required to peel them off. Now the stickers can return. One valedictorian was forced to censor a commencement speech in which he mentioned he was gay. That kind of censorship would no longer be allowed. Lawyers advised teachers in one county that they shouldn't talk with students about LGBTQ plus issues or, if they were in a same-sex relationship, even put family photos on their desks. Those photos can now come out of the closet. Also, some after-school gay-straight alliances canceled meetings or went underground because most are advised by teachers, some of whom worried about being punished. Those are now clearly allowed. Quote, what the settlement now makes clear is that students can say gay in Florida schools, that students can say trans in schools, and not have to deal with censorship from the weaponized vagueness of the law, Saunders said in an interview Tuesday.
In other words, the don't say gay era is officially over in Florida, and you absolutely love to see it. Now, what's funny is that DeSantis is still taking this settlement as a victory since the law technically remains on the books, which is true. But that vagueness is specifically what had a chilling effect on speech. So with the law now being clarified as part of this settlement, none of that is legal, meaning that you can say gay again. And the law, it exists, but it lacks teeth. And even though classroom instruction is technically banned, I mean, that was never happening in the first place. But what this did was chill speech when it comes to just general discussions about LGBTQ plus issues. So that way a teacher could be punished if, for example, they have a picture of their spouse of the same sex on the desk. Or if, for example, a kid has two mommies or two daddies and another kid asks about that, well, the teacher doesn't just have to like zip their lips. They can say, yeah, you know, some kids have two mommies, two daddies, families are different. And side note, all of the draconian anti-LGBTQ plus laws that Republicans have been cooking up in West Virginia as of late were defeated this week, or I should say most of them were defeated. Aaron in the Morning reports that a total of 20 anti-LGBTQ plus laws were defeated. So, you know, it's been a really bad week for bigots. And now on top of all of these political defeats, the pioneers of the modern day hate crusade against LGBTQ plus people are publicly fighting with each other. And now their little minions are going to bat as well. They're butting heads. So sad. So sad to see. I feel so bad for all of them. Thoughts and prayers. Uh, hope you all make up so soon. I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, keep fighting. Let them fight. I think this is great. The more they fight, the better. And I hope that their fans continue to uh, dogpile because that only makes them hate the other more and permanently severs this alliance. So uh, you love to see it. Mom. I'm gay. Gays, gays, mom, I'm transgender. transgender.